des vêtements durables imaginés pour passer toute sa vie dedans. Une garde-robe Americana pour cowboys ou pilotes. Avec lui, la mode, c'est Into the Wild. Un luxe fonctionnel, robuste et sans fioritures. Il est passé chez Marc Jacobs, Dries Van Noten et a été finaliste du prix LVMH. 100% éthique, 100% durable, 100% cool aussi. Designer, entrepreneur, engagé, Spencer Phipps, sur mesure. Hey Spencer. Hey. Made it all the way from the forest or the tent? <laughs> How was your lockdown? I was into it. Yeah? I'm like a hermit on a good day, so... <laughs> so you must have... I, I, I read that you had a climbing wall installed. Was that for lockdown or was no, that...? No, I mean, that was just was kind of kismet timing. Um, I love climbing. It's, it's a big passion of mine. And I have been getting just busier and busier. And, you know, just what uh, earlier in the year, there was the whole grev situation, which shut the metro down. Mm -mm. And I couldn't get out to the suburbs to go climbing at all. Like, it just wasn't happening. So it was like, look, I'm going to build this little thing in my house. It actually, I mean, people think it takes up a lot of space and it's like this very expensive thing, but it's, it's not, it's a wall. How often do you climb? I mean, a couple times a week, I try and okay. put in a little it's session. It's quite meditative, isn't it? It's, it's meant to be good for every part of your body. It is. It's really, and it's one of those things of, it's very, you have to focus 100% on it. Uh -huh. You know, so it's like, it's like any kind of big sport. I, I just love sport in general. Are you practicing to climb up anything more? I'm working on it. You're working on it? I'm working on okay, it. Good. We're trying to make that happen for sure. I feel sure. like that would be a good, uh, good <laughs> PR stunt. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what was the thing that you missed the most during lockdown or the person that you missed the most? You know, it made me really miss California and my family. Really? Yeah. Um, I missed like my mom. Mm. I missed being in the sunshine. You know, that was definitely one thing I missed out on a lot was like being able to just hang out outdoors. What would you say is um, the DNA of your brand? I mean, I always like to say that Phipps is first and foremost about heroes, mm -hmm. uh, which are basically it's sort of like people that are admired for noble qualities. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at, yeah, just people doing cool stuff and celebrating them. And then additionally, sort of that carries over into the second kind of main backbone of the collection, which is nature mm -hmm. and the community that surrounds that. So it's explorers, climbers, hikers, researchers, cowboys, whatever, you know? It's so interesting because those are the two things that I think have come out as true, like, heroes of the lockdown <laughs> period like uh, the heroes as you call them the, yeah. like our frontline workers the people who've been working throughout all of this and keeping us safe and the city working and then nature which everybody has missed so much exactly I feel like this couldn't be a better time for your brand <laughs> <laughs> um where do you get your inspirations from this whole collection was very much inspired by yeah american iconography and the desert Uh, so we spent months looking at old films, researching, you know, old westerns from the 50s, the 60s, that kind of nudie, uh, the rodeo tailor, mm -hmm. uh, and Elvis, and kind of just these very, like, cliche versions of America. Uh, and then putting that kind of in the context of the desert. We sort of had to make a film, just fit very nicely with what we were working on. The complicated thing was to make an American Western movie with an entirely French cast in Europe. It's a new world that we're living in. A world filled with uncertainty. To me, that just sounds sustainable. Source your, des your desert locally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we sourced it locally. We absolutely did, and the talent all came locally. They're all from Paris. Um, and it was, yeah, it was, it was an interesting challenge because it changes the way that you approach how you style it, how you cast mm -hmm. it, how you do the storytelling of the things. You know, it's much more personal. Can you tell us a little bit about the clothes? So this season, for me personally, was kind of a growing part of the brand, which has been more special occasion clothes and really like, you know, tailoring, fine things. We have like silks and 
yeah, really like beautiful, beautiful, more like high-end stuff versus the hiking clothes that we kind of started out with. Um, so we started growing our tailoring collection and we even introduced like neckwear, which I'm super excited about, things that we've got a really great collection of ties. So it's real sort of wardrobe essentials in the full 360 sense and then put on this like iconic American Hollywood spin. And you're also really, um, really focusing on the vintage uh, market, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with Gold Label, we've introduced, it's a, basically just a curated collection of vintage, which we, it's really fun, actually. It's very liberating. So what does that mean? You just go into a store, a vintage store, we, and pick out? I mean, I, yeah, I work with like vendors, basically, that curate, or they have stuff and I curate their selections and we then match it to either the seasons or we're working on some like guest curations, for example. So it's, you know, what are your 10 favorite vintage pieces? Let's see what that looks yeah, like. If you wanna, you know, let's talk about it, definitely. Um, but you know, this idea of the circular economy yeah. and you know, I'm not gonna waste the resources to make new jeans. I personally, I personally have never bought a new pair of jeans, maybe ever, actually. I can't say the same. <laughs> Which is fine. I, I mean, read you know, that don't feel bad. But de jeans are the single most popular item of clothing on the planet. They are, and they're also one of the most complicated and wasteful in natural yeah. resources because Absolutely. they involve a lot of water, not only in the cotton growing, but the washing. The indigo becomes complicated because it washes into the rivers. Yeah. It's this whole thing. And I personally, like, they've been, I've been buying vintage jeans, you know, since I was a teenager. So we, as a brand, are sort of operating as kind of an umbrella of style mm -hmm. where it doesn't necessarily matter if I made the garment, mm -hmm. but it fits into our universe. I love that. So I can kind of put our stamp on it. We literally put our logo, we put a little I think that's so tag great. on it. And then you as a customer, you can, you get a basically a one-off unique piece of the brand that no one else in the world ever has. That's a really good idea. <laughs> I, really, I really, really like that. <laughs> Big question here, but do you think that fashion is becoming more responsible when it comes to they're trying. They're trying. They're doing their... Are you hopeful? I'm very optimistic, yes. I do think that there will be, and maybe this is like this period of kind of quarantine and everything that's kind of shocked people's senses a bit more mm. to realize that they, they, they got to pick up the pace. They've got to try harder. And I think a lot of brands will start changing in a very serious way uh, once things pick up again, you know, once... Um Let's talk a little bit about your, your current living environment, which is Paris, which I'm sure is very different to where you grew up. Yes. Do you think that the cliches that we hear about Paris are true? Are the French really as grumpy as people say? No, this is the one, this is the first thing actually that I want to say is Debunk. not true. Debunk completely. I have found French people to be lovely. Okay, if you're an obnoxious tourist, absolutely. But I think that would be anywhere in the world and someone would be rude to you if you're super annoying. My experience in Paris has been just extremely positive. You know, everyone's been really helpful. Okay, there's, you know, a certain amount of bureaucratic paperwork and c'est pas possible uh, <laughs> kind of mentality. But once you deal with that... I love the c'est pas possible mentality. <laughs> there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that. But it's also like they want to say it but then they want to like do you the favor also. So there's like extra, there's a psychological element to where they're like, no, 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 say Papa Steve, but I'm going to, I'm going to hook you up. Mm. See how I'm trying really hard for you right now. Yeah, you yeah. know, that kind of a thing. So. I'm, I'm curious as to whether for you, it's, it really means something to be a designer in Paris. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was kind of very specific about starting the brand here. Paris is about dreams in terms of the fashion that you create here. It's about this kind of fantasy version of reality. Um, which is what I strive for at Phipps. It's more, yeah, it's not real hiking clothes. I mean, you can hike, you can do whatever. You can do whatever you want in any clothes. You can hike in that if you want. I shall. Yeah, you know, shall go and for a let hike. nobody stop you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, the idea is for us to have it be the sort of superlative version of that. I want to know whether in your opinion, there is such a thing as a fashion faux pas or something that really is unacceptably bad taste and that you would never do. I think the only faux pas is just not dressing for yourself. When people don't do it personally and they follow just sort of vapid trends because that's what something, someone said it was cool, that's yeah. kind of my faux pas. But if you want to wear, yeah, Birkenstocks with white socks, I wear white <laughs> socks with everything and happily with sandals. Well, when I lived in Belgium, they called me the American with the white socks. That's very funny. <laughs>
<laughs> feels like a, that could be your, <laughs> your gamekeeper name. <laughs> I think you've brought something to show me, I've been told. I did, yes, yeah, I brought... Oh, poems. Yes, it's a, a really the, the iconic Allen Ginsberg howl and a selection of other poems and other poems, it says right Do there. Do I get a reading? If you want, I mean, it's still so powerful, you know, 50 years later. So, you ready? Yes. I saw the best minds of my generation, destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical, naked, dragging themselves through the Negro streets at dawn, looking for an angry fix. Angel-headed hipsters burning of the ancient heavenly connection to the starry dynamo and the machinery of night, who poverty and tatters and hollow-eyed and high, sat up smoking in the supernatural darkness of cold water flats, floating across the tops of cities contemplating jazz, who bared their brains to heaven under the L and saw Mohammedan angels staggering on tenement roofs illuminated, who passed through universities with radiant cool eyes, hallucinating Arkansas in Blake light tragedy among the scholars of war, who were expelled from the academics for crazy, publishing obscene odes on the windows of the skull, who cowered in unshaven rooms and underwear, burning their money in wastebaskets and listening to the terror through the wall, who got busted in their pubic beards returning through Laredo with a belt of marijuana for New York, who ate fire in paint hotels and drank turpentine in Paradise Alley death or purgatory their torsos night after night, with dreams and drugs, with waking nightmares, alcohol and cock and endless balls, incomparable blind streets of shuddering cloud and lightning in the mind leaping toward the poles of Canada and Patterson, illuminating all the motionless world of time between. It goes on for another like million pages. Can I see? Absolutely. Thank you. I feel like I need to read more poetry. It's nice. It's been a long time since I read a poem, actually. And I found this book again and was like, you know what? Let's do it. Just read a little poem. Mm. Thank you so much. It was My so pleasure. nice chatting to you. I cannot wait to see the film. Well, it's coming out. And your big debut. My big cinematic <laughs> debut. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>